Hey everyone, welcome to my new video. Uh, these last few weeks I've just been taking a bit of rest after the Burn World Championships. After such a big comp like that, it's always nice to have a bit of downtime. So, just getting back into training now. I've got Arco Rockmaster coming up, uh, which is going to be a really exciting competition. And then on to the next, uh, next World Cup and then on to Laval, which is in nine weeks. Looking back at the Burn World Championships, just thinking about it now, it was an absolutely incredible experience. Being in that kind of zone with all these incredible climbers coming together for the peak of the season. Um, it's the Olympic qualifier, everyone's looking at this event, it's such a big deal. And just competing in that environment was, was just amazing. I have mixed feelings about the event, but overall I'm just so happy um, for the experience. And yeah, it's just, it was just a really nice competition. I do have a lot of footage from the competition, but because there was just so many rounds, there was so much climbing to do, the schedule was really hectic. Um, it ended up where it all just got a bit scattered. Yeah, it wasn't as clear cut as I would have liked it to be, so it just ended up focusing fully on the competition. So yeah, it, it kind of took a back seat for this, uh, for this comp especially. But there's still lots of footage uh, of the competition. I'm really excited to show you this new video. In a huge competition like this, there's such a huge range of emotions going around. Me especially, compared to any of the other World Cups, I was having big ups, big downs, and I was, it was definitely hard. It was hard to try and manage expectations um, just it was hard to just focus in on the results but all you have to do is just focus on the climbing but for me this was definitely a level up compared to um, all of the other competitions this year and tough going through some of the rounds having good results and having bad results mixed feelings I had a lot of similar emotions to what I had in the start of the World Cup season uh, I went to Hachioji at the start of the season my first ever Boulder World Cup my first ever World Cup season and I sort of got Really, I got overwhelmed and it's hard to just go out and focus on the climbing when you're in that state of mind. You've not had the experience. Um, and as I went through the bouldering and through the lead comps of this season, each World Cup, I learned something new and I learned something different, which really helped me in the next ones. Um, so for this World Championships, going through all of these rounds in such a different style of climbing and different format of um, competition, I'm so grateful for all of that experience. And going into the next Olympic events, because pretty much now all of the other events, if I don't qualify in Laval, there's the OQS, all of them are running on this new Olympic format. So getting the experience from Bern was so, so important because you need to be on peak form for then as well. Um, so I'm hoping that how I learn from the World Cup, uh, World Cup competitions, I'm gonna learn from the World Championships and then bring that into the next uh, Olympic events. But man, it's hard um, coming out of that with being so close to an Olympic ticket and so close to some good performances in the World Championship. Um, but there's always another chance, it's still just the start, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how the comp went. So I've now been through all of the videos, I've analysed all of my boulders, my lead routes, my rounds, different sort of aspects of the competition. I've been through a lot of uh, video footage of other climbers as well, and what was so apparent is I have so much to learn. Looking at Jakob execute on a lead route is just insane. Every time he gets on that lead wall, he gets 100% out of himself. And that's just so great to see. And his result in that World Champs was just incredible. He did so well. Um, so I'm definitely looking at people like him and going, right, I need to learn from that. How I felt in this competition, it was like 50-50 whether I was gonna get on the route and have a breakdown or get on the route and top it and hype the crowd up. It was really hard to manage emotions. So going through um, these rounds has been really beneficial and I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, looking at all of these other climbers, there's still so much to learn. I got exposed a lot in the bouldering about different sort of moves which I didn't get, which I haven't been had much practice on, like lashes, paddle dinos, all of this other stuff. So there's so much to learn and I'm going to go away now and then train that, train that, train that and then come back um, hopefully a lot stronger in those aspects. The first round of the competition, the bouldering qualifications, uh, for me straight away, I think I had two top five zones and coming out of that competition after seeing like Serato get five tops who I was climbing after, I was like, oh God, I haven't made semis, oh no, this sucks, first round of the comp, it's all gone to, it's all gone to, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, it's all gone, it's all gone to um, uh, not good. Um, <laughs> and then coming out of that and then having a really, really nervous wait to see whether I was gonna make the semi because I thought I hadn't made semis so having that hours and hours and hours of thinking, oh, am I gonna make the semi, am I not? That's another huge emotional roller coaster right at the start of the competition, which 
realistically in a comp that big you could really do with not putting yourself in that position because after that I was really sort I was really um, mentally already had a challenge to fight through which you don't really want to be doing that early in the comp and then straight after the bouldering qualifications there was lead qualies which suddenly I have to completely forget about the bouldering qualifications and then just get onto lead which is really tricky to do because there's not much time in between them uh, so this wild roller coaster of emotions of these rounds which really didn't have much time between them and managing that was really difficult and I, it's something which I struggled with the experience of going through those roller coasters and switching up between disciplines in such a short amount of time is going to be really beneficial and that's something which I was really happy with. I managed to flip that boulder result which I wasn't necessarily too happy with and then go out into the lead qualifications and then get a really good um, quality result which basically put me straight into the combined semi-finals. Uh, so that's one thing which I was really happy with was that quick change of emotions and getting a good result in lead. And then after lead qualifications it was straight into the bouldering semi-final and this boulder semi-final I think was one of my worst boulder performances of the season pretty much after having gone through all those World Cups. It just felt like I got flustered, I was in the moment, suddenly you're in a world champ, suddenly there's all this pressure, suddenly um, yeah, you start thinking about all this other stuff like am I, have I lost my boulder form, am I in the best shape right now, I'm not so good at these different types of lachet moves. Um, so going from that and then and then going straight into lead after that again was another roller coaster. Um, and coming back from that bouldering semi-final was probably one of what I felt like was one of my biggest knockdowns of the, of the season. I felt quite bad after that. And picking myself up, to the, up, up after that was um, really important to do. And I feel like uh, I did it quite well and I'm happy because I'll take that experience and be able to bounce back a lot quicker next time. Or oh, hopefully there isn't a next time. Um, Hopefully I get a good result next time, but uh, that's the plan. That's always the plan. That was one of the highlights of my week, coming out from Boulder semis and taking that bad result, kicking it to the corner, and then coming out for lead semifinals and probably having one of the most enjoyable routes I've had this season. Climbing up up that route in front of, in front of that crowd and then getting the high point was just, just incredible. It was my favorite type of route, pure endurance, really nice moves at the start hard move over the head wall and then just a brutal head wall where you're fighting against the pump. I literally got the maximum out of myself on that semi-final route. I was cranking down this left hand. I was like a, like a centimeter away from the, from, the, uh, from the next hold and yeah, just shaking out, recovering, hearing the crowd. This huge amount of adrenaline on that head wall was just incredible. And that was definitely one of the highlights of the comp for me. That semi-final was such a great route. And yeah, just saying again, the crowd was incredible. The Burn Arena was such like an amphitheater and you could properly hear everyone. Everyone gathered around the wall for every single round pretty much. So every time you're on that head wall, the crowd is going wild and, and you're in that moment of fighting. It's just so surreal. Those are always my favorite moments. Moments when I'm on the head wall, I've got the crowd, I've got the crowd behind me. I've completely forgotten about the comp at this point. I'm just like, yeah, this is fun. I got my, like, shaking out, fighting, going to the next move, just about getting enough in your left arm to get it onto the, and then shaking out on your right arm and just properly going through those fine margins of, I might come off now or I might get another move. I might top this or I might, it's just such an incredible feeling. Nothing beats that for me, being on a lead head wall with a crowd behind you and just fighting and fighting and fighting. It's just such a, I can't explain that, I can't explain that feeling. It's just something you're gonna have to go try. Um. <laughs> and it's such a big confidence thing. Once you do this, once you have like a really nice result, a really good result, and you get into that zone of fighting really hard and you manage to top a route or something um, in front of a huge crowd, it can feel, it could, you then take that experience of that and then you take it into your next route and then your next route's even better executed and you can take experience from that and then take it into the next route. That's what um, Jakob Schubert does really well. Every time he gets into the, onto a route, he executes, executes, executes. And that's something which I think I let slip a bit and burn. One route could have gone incredible. The next route, I'm getting flustered and falling off like four clips up on some V2 lache. Um, but yeah, that's such a big thing. It's just not getting flustered and coming out and then knowing that you can do it and getting on with full confidence and just blasting up the route like there's no tomorrow. If the semi-final route showed me everything that I loved, um, <laughs> then the final route showed me everything which I, I need to improve. That final route was, um, yeah, that, that wasn't the best for me. I was feeling really good. 
I came out, I got on the wall, I climbed the star quite well, and I got to this lache and um, this swing, like fourth clip up, really easy. Everyone else did it pretty easily. I think Andre fell off a couple moves after in a separate um, like slip. But yeah, falling off on the fourth clip there was truly heartbreaking. Whilst it's not the, wasn't the end of the world because I was already into the combined semi-final. Uh, it's, um, it's the World Championship lead final. Everyone's talking about the Olympic tickets, but still these individual disciplines, it's the World Championships. It's such a big competition. So I really, want to go, I really wanted to go out there and then put my best, give my best result onto that final route because it just looked like a great route. But unfortunately, I went for a couple swings. I hesitated. My fingers dry fired out the pocket and before I knew it, I was um, on the ground and that was really that was really hard. When that moment you come down, you've not had a great result, you've had a low slip. That's when it's really hard. You just have to pick your head up, um, acknowledge everyone's um, and just, yeah, just be professional about it because it, you can't let that get to you too much. Um, it's just a competition. It happens. It's going to happen at some point in your career. And it's how you take that bad result and take that little slip and what you do with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take that experience and hopefully it's not going to happen again. That moment once you've come down, you've had a bad, you've had not had the best result. You've fallen off third or fourth clip, and you sat there, um, and you're trying to untie your knot. You're trying to fiddle this knot. I think there should be some sort of rule where you can just get a knife and slash it, and then just just walk out of the back somewhere and just just be with your own thoughts for, <laughs> for like a couple of minutes because that's intense. When you got the whole crowd there, you know that Jakob's gonna to top it or something, or Orange's topped it or something, and you're sat there trying to untie this knot in front of the huge crowd, going trying to process this bad result in your in your mind just being there just wishing with everything you've got that you could just go back up and try it again um, but yeah it's a really hard position and just picking it picking yourself up and going back and being professional about it is is the best thing you can do so that's week one done week one was the the individual um, world championships of leading boulder and week two this is the big week the combined uh, the combined week this is the the one that everyone's here for so coming out for the combined Boulder semi-final, which was the first event, um, I came 10th. It was a big improvement of, from the individual um, semi-final. I was pretty happy. It was a mixed result. There was definitely stuff like Boulder 3, the Lache, which I, I didn't get anywhere on, which is, a, which is a big shame. It's something which I need to uh, really improve on because it's coming to apparent in bothering bothering comps these days um, but yeah 10th place it was I knew I needed top eight to be guaranteed into the um, uh, combined final so a 10th place finish isn't far out of that far out from that it would mean I need an, an average lead route I was hyped to get on the lead route and the, the combined lead semi that was just another great route I just enjoyed it so much so power endurancey um, really secure, just a pure test of forearm endurance and power endurance. I had another surreal moment on that route where I was on the head wall hyping the crowd up and yeah, just a great, great moment. I'm so happy I was able to top that. I think me, Serato and, and Jakob were the only tops on that. So, and coming out of the, the, combined, uh, the combined semi, I, I was um, going through to the combined final in second place. So it was a great, great result on that, on that lead route. It's amazing how much getting a good lead result can really bump you up the rankings even if you didn't have the best boulder result. So yeah, there's something about these combined semi-final routes which is just slightly different to the individual disciplines. They like to make it a bit more endurancey, a bit more uh, secure. So the first section is a bit easier, the middle section is a bit harder, and the last section is just like a pure fight. And each of those, each of those moves is worth so many points on that head wall. So fighting on that head wall with the crowd behind you knowing, yeah, I'm getting a lot of points here, more points, more points. Uh, feels really good so getting a top on that was just an incredible moment and i'm really happy what's really funny about a comp like this at the start of the week you have at the start of the first week you have hundreds and hundreds of climbers uh going to in this hotel or in these couple hotels uh, preparing for the event and everywhere you look there's climbers 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 breakfast there's climbers 
you're just walking around, you see climbers everywhere. As people didn't make it into the next rounds, people slowly leave the, leave the hotel and leave the arena. It was a really strange experience. It was almost like the Hunger Games where people are just getting taken, taken away. Like they finish their round and they're taken away. And, um, and yeah, by the end of it, it was just a really, really small group of us in this hotel. Because it's such a massive exhibition center, there's sports going on, but there's also all of this other stuff. Like by the end of it, it's, it's like we're walking around and there was people in suits there for business meetings and I'm like why am I still here I feel like I've overstayed my welcome there's only eight of us sat in this hotel waiting for this combined finals and there's like a whole new whole new set of people here and it's just a really bizarre experience how people finish their comp and they go obviously um, yeah so by the end of it it was just this really small group of us left in this hotel thinking oh god this is getting a bit of a slog this hotel only so many different things you can do in this hotel i just got to get out of this place but the next events in laval and the oqs they're a lot shorter than this so it's only like three rounds so this is the only one which is going to be like a big two weeks in a hotel of um, long comp and then on to the combined final the combined final first up was the boulder round and it was really quick turnaround from boulder to lead it's only like half an hour so we do our boulder round and it's another round which I I was kind of happy with but it was really I would have liked to do a lot better. I had three tops which um, can look like oh that's that's really good but a lot of the other climbers either had four tops or it was three tops and uh, all of the zones and on the first boulder I, I, I had a bit of a misread. I didn't read it as like a paddle straight away i started trying other things i went all the way to the left i didn't commit to what i thought was the beta straight away which wasted attempts and it's just another one of those things where experience and that type of boulder would have really helped so yeah walking away without without a top and boulder one which i think two people had a top on it which was Jakob and tomoa and the rest of the field had the two zones and i only got the first zone on that one finishing that boulder and then going on to the next ones knowing that i was already a zone behind kind of uh, was a bit of a blow Finishing the round, I was just a bit behind everyone else. Um, I was 20, quite a lot of points behind Jakob and Tamur, who had four tops, and then only uh, like five points behind the people who had the second zone on um, on the first boulder. So it's annoying that I didn't manage to uh, nail the paddle, um, and definitely something I need more experience on. But going into the lead route, I was already slightly in a deficit on points. So yeah, I had to pull out a route. The lead was a very, very powerful route and I definitely got a bit flustered on it. I went, I was going through it, I was climbing very secure, whereas in a lot of other routes of this competition I was really kind of going through the moves quickly and efficiently and using my experience from the World Cups. But this route I definitely feel like I seized up a bit, got into a bit of a box. Um, it's, the, it's the combined finals, last route of the competition, it's arguably the most important route of the competition. It's the last one, um, and yeah, I got flustered. I overpulled a lot. I made a beta mistake in the middle bit going through the 360 blue holds. I tried to get a toe hook out right, which was just, I don't even know what I was thinking there, honestly. And then after that, I could have rested on the good holds and then got a bit back on my forearms, but I didn't. And then I did the campus move, which a lot of people fell off, uh, which I was uh, happy with. But by that point, I'd wasted a lot of energy lower down and then fell off the powerful move over the lip. Uh, which really sucks because yeah that left me in fifth place uh, which is unfortunately not enough for an Olympic ticket. Could have used a lot more of my experience from the World Cups on that route but the moment got to me I felt the pressure a bit of being in that in such a big competition and yeah I climbed it like I was in a box. Uh, looking at Yako back on the live stream how he climbed that route was just incredible like I, I said it I went up to him I said to his face like it's just it's just insane you could see all of his experience from all of those past competitions and he absolutely nailed it. During that competition, he definitely deserves that result. He was by far the best, showed himself to be the best combined climber there in that, in that final. So yeah, huge congrats to him. It was incredible to see and I'm looking to take some of that experience that he's got and then, and then try and apply that into my next comps because it was just so great to watch. I had like a chat with him. I saw him in Innsbruck the other day, talking to him about the comps and everything and he's just gave me some good advice about executing on route. So I'm gonna, really try and use that. He's a really nice guy, so yeah. Thanks, Jakob, if you're watching somehow. I'll get you in the next one. After the combined final finished, I was I was pretty gutted. 
you have to hold your head up high, you have to go through all the press pit. It's really intense. Um, all the fans are there asking for autographs, which is really nice, and I'm so grateful for all of that support. Um, it's always really nice to meet all, of, meet all of the fans and everyone who comes to these competitions and shows the support. It's so grateful. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's, it's really nice to um, come out of the competition and have so many people like show their kind of support and everything. And then coming out of the, the combined, I straight back to the hotel, tried to process it a bit, but I was pretty upset after that. Like I sat in my sat in the hotel room, my parents around me, I was having a bit of a cry. I was quite sad. Um, and that was definitely just a huge release um, of emotions after the competition. And I think it's really important to basically just let that out after the comp. You don't want to hold that all inside of you. Because if you don't, if you just hold it inside of you and then just stick a brave face on and then and then don't learn from that, um, then it's not going to be great. But just letting it all out and then doing what's got to be done and taking that and using that as experience and then going into the next competitions and then being a lot mentally stronger and knowing what you need to do. I've come so close to what I wanted to achieve at the World Champs, just a couple holds away from getting the Olympic ticket. So yeah, it's completely natural to be upset after that and. Yeah, I'm happy with, obviously now I look back, it's a couple of weeks later, I'm reflecting and it, the World Champs was just an incredibly successful comp. I've learned so much from it. Um, I had some great experiences. I really enjoyed going through all of the rounds. Um, and yeah, I've had so much experience and I'm really looking forward to, to using that in the next competitions. Think of the main takeaways of, of the competition and there are three main ones. It's been so important just to, to rest, rest my mind go out and have a good time climbing and just let my body sort of relax and get ready for the next stages. Um, but going into the, the next few weeks, what's just so important is just have a really, really good time. I'm going to Arco Rockmaster. It's going to be such a great competition. Then on to the Copa World Cup, which I'm so excited for. And after that, I've got some exciting things planned. Um, the biggest thing after the, after the World Champs, especially in bouldering, was a lot of this sort of new coordination style, lashes, paddle dinos, all of this crazy stuff uh, was something which I definitely need to work on. And we've been saying that this whole season, but it's not been properly worked on in a, in a, in a quantity which is going to reflect a lot on the, um, on the competition. So we've got a really exciting trip planned around Europe. Going to go to France, Belgium, all of these, or just wherever, which are known for having setters which put on all of these crazy moves, um, like Karma, the French team, like training places have all of these crazy boulders up so that is going to be a big focus there's going to be a couple of weeks of that uh, in the build up to Laval um, which is going to be really good I'm really excited to to go and get moving get flowing on some weird boulders uh, something which I'm not not so great at and the third and final point is having good lead fitness it's so important to be fit and lead I was really I was had good endurance I was feeling good and burn um, but yeah, definitely going to improve on that further and further and further. We've always, we've already just come back from a trip, a short trip, five day trip to Innsbruck to maintain and build a bit on my lead endurance and feeling really good. Um, but yeah, got another trip planned already to Innsbruck after the bouldering, after the bouldering little skills um, trip to Europe. Um, so yeah, going to be back in Innsbruck soon, uh, training hard for lead and yeah, bring on Laval. I'm so psyched for this next few weeks of training. I'm going to turn up in Laval. Um, I'm going to be ready, I'm going to enjoy it and I can't wait. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone for, uh, for watching, I really hope you enjoyed. It's a bit late after the World Champs, I know it's uh, quite a long time after, given a good reflection of what it was like competing in, um, in that sort of environment and I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, thanks for watching.